Asian American Experiences was offered as part of the University of Maryland's Honors Program and was the only class that dealt with Asian American Studies at that time. When I got into the University of Maryland at College Park, um, that's where I really noticed, I started questioning um, who I, you know, who I am, um, what does it mean to be Asian American, um, and then I started noticing that there were Women's Studies program, there was African American Studies program, there was Asian Studies, and I just started to think like, you know, for people like myself wanting to know more about, you know, where we come from and, um, yeah, just kind of our history in the United States. So when I was a freshman, they were offering this course called Asian American Experience. Well, I talked to our TA and our teacher and I just asked, like, why do we not have more classes like this? I just thought I, I felt entitled to a good education at Maryland, that I should be we should, we should be having this kind of um, curriculum. So we started an organization called WASP, not white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, as you're familiar with, but working for an Asian American Studies program. We decided that as an organization, we wanted to push for the establishment of an Asian American Studies program so that we could have more classes offered, such as this one, in addition to the hiring of faculty and staff and the basic establishment of a program. From there, we just did our research about what it took to get an Asian American Studies program since there was already this precedent in the United States and how we studied how they did it in other colleges and then we brought it here. And so it started very, very much as formal proposals to the administrations. Later that summer, due to the student meetings, the provost offered seed funds to start the Asian American Studies project. This led to the creation of more classes for the 1995 to 1996 academic year. Um, I think at that time I began at Maryland, there were several isolated courses on the Asian American experience, but they weren't part of a cohesive program of study um, in academia. And that's sort of what the difference was. It's one thing for the university to fund individual courses that may be of interest to students, and it's another for them to fund on a much larger scale an entire program designed to offer a major, a minor, a certificate degree, etc. It seemed like the university was very favorable to an Asian American Studies program proposal. So, in the winter of 1995, the Asian American Studies Project held a one-day workshop for administrators and department chairs to create a formal proposal to be approved by the University Senate. If they approved the proposal, then the program would be established. It would get a curriculum, professors, and the ability to award certificates to students who complete 21 credits worth of classes. They submitted the proposal, but to no avail. The program proposal kept on going a little bit forward and then getting shelved and getting forward and getting shelved. And so it, it got uh, a little frustrating in terms of when this was actually going to happen. Students began to bring the community together and push for the establishment of a program. We had to be very creative and bold to get the attention of other students and the administration to pay to you know even consider our issue and uh, some things we did were just teach-ins um, going out to high schools and getting the media involved but then also being a little bit more radical with chalking. Back then, chalking was a big deal. Ooh, you guys wasn't even like, whoa, big deal. But if we would chalk up something like, did you know over 120,000 Japanese American citizens were interned, you know, against their will during World War II? Uh, you know, people were like, what? What's going on? You know, and then people would just walk into their class and we would just chalk up with all this Asian American history facts that you weren't getting in your. Uh, here at, at the beginning, it was it was it was all about creating buzz and, and getting more people interested and more people involved. There were a bunch of people.
who became very close friends. And uh, during that period, you know, about a one or two year period, where everyone took on leadership roles in their own social groups. That helped by you know, spreading the word, um, having each of those different groups pull their members in, and just to talk about issues affecting uh, Asian Americans on a whole, on campus, you know, across the country. And you know, maybe out of a hundred people, we got 10 people more involved, you know, really interested. So one of the things we did was go down to Duke, I think it was in 1995, to the East Coast Asian Student Union Conference to put our bid in for, um, to, to host the conference in 1996, and we won the bid. Um, at that time, hosting an East Coast Asian uh, Student Union Conference was a, was a pretty big deal. Um, because you're the host school, students are coming from not just the East Coast, but the West Coast as well, and you know from the Midwest, all over the U.S. And it's a great time to showcase um, the importance of Asian American students and their involvement in the university system. The Asian American Studies program was really going to start to happen uh, pretty soon, but it turns out that it's still um, was still not a priority for the university. In the spring of 1997, the initial funding that Provost Fallon gave began to run out. With no support from the university, the program would never be established. The students had to act quickly, and they did. There isn't a student demand for the program, then the administration will not give you anything. Not, you know, proactively. There has to be that student demand. And so we had to rally the students again. Uh, we had an idea for a stereotype day, which was every day is stereotype day until we have Asian American Studies at the University of Maryland. So we all dressed up as coolies, dressed up really nerdy. And here we have, you know, the Latino gangster walking down, da -da -da, give him a hand, you know, and here's the Japanese tourists. A lot of people came out to support it and a lot of minority groups just would, you know, would see us out in, in, in front of the Stamp Student Union and they would just be very supportive and somehow we rounded up like 100, 150 people and someone suggested, well, why don't we march into the president of the university's office? The Black Student Union president was like, let's go down to Kerwin's office. And we're like, Okay. And he's like, yeah. yeah. You know, so everyone gets all pumped up. And uh, we started chan chanting Asian American Studies Now, and you know, 100 people turned 150 people to 200 as we made our way down to the president's office. And so we went down there, and we're like, we demand a meeting with Kerwin, because they were just placating us and not um, attending to our demands. And they're like, okay. <laughs> uh, of course, when we got to the office, we were stopped. but by campus police, but it was a lot of fun and, and it, was just, you know, it just created a lot of buzz and a lot of people were very supportive. I remember the night before and actually the day of the meeting, WASP had planned teach-ins and workshops outside the student union. So to have the two kind of layers of approach coincide on the same day. I remember the night before we had gone okay, I guess I'm admitting I'm a culprit in this. We had gone chalking all over campus, chalking things like Asian American Studies Now, just things to get campus awareness up and moving. Um, and I remember we had gone behind the main administration building and we saw President Kerwin's parking space. And we were like, ah, what the heck? So we chalked Asian American Studies Now in his parking space so that he would see it when he came in that morning um, to know that that this was something that the students wanted and that we were ready to fight for. I went with a bunch of the students, some of the other faculty, and uh, we had quite an important meeting where the students made the case that we needed more funding and more support for Asian American Studies. We had gotten into the main administration building and we were ushered into this conference room and Dr. Philip Nash had brought a video camera to the meeting to tape the meeting um, so that obviously we would have some record of what went on and what sort of discussions went on um, and so that we would be able to clearly I'm assuming, uh, you know, state the administration's position to the students, etc., um, after the meeting was over. And they all get nervous, you know, they're like, what is this? And at that point, I don't, I think it might have been the provost was like, shut that camera off. 
they knew that they were going to be able to give us what we're, we were demanding of them. And they didn't want it on tape. We uh, did have a great session, and I remember looking over and seeing Christina and some of these other really articulate and brilliant uh, people talking to the president, just making his head spin because he you know, had to deal with all these very, very articulate and uh, motivated people who wanted their Asian American Studies program. So in the end, we did get more support and more funding for the program. A task force on Asian American Studies was created to develop the proposal further. In the winter of 1997, the Task Force on Asian American Studies submitted their report on the Asian American Studies Certificate Program to the then Provost, Provost Joffrey. A few months later, the Provost endorsed that report. It was then in a University Senate campus meeting that the vote to endorse and fully approve the Asian American Studies Certificate Program was up for vote. I remember sitting in that meeting along with a number of other student leaders who had worked so hard to get to this point of having this vision become a reality. And the vote went up and 